you just kind of painted a beautiful picture of comparison. This is the way we think about ideologies because we is what's working better. Do you separate in your mind the ideals of communism to the Stalinist implementation of communism? And again, capitalism and American implementation of capitalism. And as we look at now the 21st century where yes, this idea you know, of socialism being a potential political system that we would, or economic system we would operate under in the United States, rising up again as an idea. So how do we think about that again in the 21st century, about these ideas, fundamental deep ideas of communism and capitalism? Yeah, so in the Marxist schema, there was something called feudalism, which was supposedly destroyed by the bourgeoisie who created capitalism. And then the working class was supposed to destroy capitalism and create socialism. But socialism wasn't the end stage. The end stage was going to be communism. So that's why the Communist Party in the Soviet Union first built socialism, transcending capitalism. The next stage was socialism. And the end game, the final stage, was communism. So their version of socialism was derived from Marx. And Marx argued that the problem was capitalism had been very beneficial for a while. It had produced greater wealth and greater opportunity than feudalism had, but then it had come to serve only the narrow interests of the so-called bourgeoisie or the capitalists themselves. And so for humanity's sake, the universal class, the working class, needed to overthrow capitalism in order for greater productivity, greater wealth to be produced for all of humanity to flourish and on a higher level. So you couldn't have socialism unless you destroyed capitalism. So that meant no markets, no private property, no so-called parliaments or bourgeois parliaments as they were called. So you got socialism in Marx's schema by transcending by eliminating capitalism. Now, Marx also called for freedom. He said that this elimination of markets and private property and bourgeois parliaments would produce greater freedom in addition to greater abundance. However, everywhere this was tried, it produced tyranny and mass violence, death, and shortages. Everywhere it was tried. There's no exception in historical terms. And so it's very interesting. Marx insisted that capitalism had to be eliminated. You couldn't have markets. Markets were chaos. You needed planning. You couldn't have uh, hiring of wage labor. That was wage slavery. You couldn't have private property because that was a form of theft. So in the Marxist scheme, somehow you were going to eliminate capitalism and get to freedom. It turned out you didn't get to freedom. So then people said, well, you can't blame Marx because he said we needed freedom. He was pro-freedom. So it's kind of like dropping a nuclear bomb. You say you're going to drop a nuclear bomb, but you want to minimize civilian casualties. So the dropping of the nuclear bomb is the elimination of markets, private property, and parliaments. But you're going to bring freedom, or you're going to minimize civilian casualties. So you drop the nuclear bomb, you eliminate the capitalism, and you get famine, deportation, no constraints on executive power, and not abundance, but shortages. And people say, well, that's not what Marx said. That's not what I said. I said I wanted to minimize civilian casualties. The nuclear bomb goes off, and there's mass civilian casualties. And you keep saying, but I said drop the bomb, but minimize civilian casualties. So that's where we are. That's history, not philosophy. I'm speaking about historical examples, all the cases that we have. Marx was not a theorist of inequality. Marx was a theorist of alienation, of dehumanization, of fundamental 
uh, constraints or what he called fetters on productivity and on wealth, which he all attributed to capitalism. Marx wasn't bothered by inequality. He was bothered by something deeper, something yeah. worse, right? Those socialists who figured this out, who understood that if you dropped the nuclear bomb, there was no way to minimize civilian casualties. Those socialists who came to understand that if you eliminated capitalism, markets, private property, and parliaments, if you eliminated that, you wouldn't get freedom. Those Marxists, those socialists, became what we would call social democrats or people who would use the state to regulate the market, not to eliminate the market. They would use the state to redistribute income, not to destroy private property and markets. And so this, in the Marxist schema, was apostasy. Because they were accepting markets and private property. They were accepting alienation and wage slavery. They were accepting capitalism in principle, but they wanted to fix it. They wanted to ameliorate. They wanted to regulate. And so they became what was denounced as revisionists, not true Marxists, not real revolutionaries, but parliamentary road, parliamentarians. We know this as normal politics, normal social democratic politics from the European case or from the American case. But they are not asking to eliminate capitalism, blaming capitalism, blaming markets and private property. So this rift among the socialists, the ones who are for elimination of capitalism, transcending capitalism, otherwise you could never, ever get to abundance and freedom in the Marxist schema versus those who accept capitalism but want to regulate and redistribute. That rift on the left has been with us almost from the beginning. It's a kind of civil war on the left between the Leninists and the Social Democrats or the Revisionists as they're known pejoratively by the Leninists. We have the same confusion today in the world today where people also cite Marx saying capitalism is a, a dead end and we need to drop that nuclear bomb and get freedom, get no civilian casualties, versus those who say, yes, there are inequities, there's a lack of equality of opportunity, there are many other issues that we need to deal with, and we can fix those issues, we can regulate, we can redistribute, I'm not advocating this as a political position. I'm not taking a political position myself. I'm just saying that there's a confusion on the left between those who accept capitalism and want to regulate it versus those who think capitalism is inherently evil and if we eliminate it, we'll get to a better world when in fact history shows that if you eliminate capitalism, you get to a worse world. The problems might be real, but the solutions are worse from history's lessons. Now we have deep, painful lessons, but there's not that many of them. You know, our history is relatively short as a human species. Do we have a good answer on the left of Leninist, Marxist versus social Democrat versus capitalism versus any um, anarchy? You know, do we have sufficient samples from history to make better decisions about the future of our politics and economics. For sure. We have the American Revolution, which was a revolution not about class, not about workers, not about a so-called universal class of the working class, elimination of capitalism markets and the bourgeoisie, but was about the category citizen. It was about universal humanity where everyone in theory could be part of it as a citizen. The revolution fell short of its own ideals. Not everyone was a citizen. Right. For example, if you didn't own property, you were a male but didn't own property, you didn't have full rights of a citizen. If you were a female, whether you owned property or not, you weren't a full citizen. If you were uh, imported from Africa against your will, you were a slave and not a citizen. And so... 
not everyone was afforded the rights in actuality that were declared in principle. However, over time, the category citizen could expand and slaves could be emancipated and they could get the right to vote. They could become citizens. Non-property owning males could get the right to vote and become full citizens. Females could get the right to vote and become full citizens. In fact, eventually my mother was able to get a credit card in her own name in the 1970s without my father having to co-sign the paperwork. It took a long time. But nonetheless, the category citizen can expand and it can become a universal category. So we have that, the citizen universal humanity model of the American Revolution, which was deeply flawed at the time it was introduced, but fixable over time. We also had that separation of powers and constraint on executive power that we began this conversation with. That was also institutionalized in the American Revolution because they were afraid of tyranny. They were afraid of unconstrained executive power. So they built a system that would contain that, constrain it institutionally, not circumstantially. So that's a great gift. Within that universal category of citizen, which has over time come closer to fulfilling its original promise, and within those institutional constraints, that separation of powers, constraint on executive power, within that we've developed what we might call normal politics, left-right politics. People can be in favor of redistribution and government action, and people can be in favor of small government, hands-off government, no redistribution or less redistribution. That's the normal left-right political spectrum where you respect the institutions and separation of powers, and you respect the universal category of citizenship and equality before the law and everything else. I don't see any problems with that whatsoever. I see that as a great gift, not just to this country, but around the world and other places besides the United States have developed this. The problems arise at the extremes, the far left and the far right, that don't recognize the legitimacy either of capitalism or of democratic rule of law institutions. And they want to eliminate constraints on executive power. They want to control the public sphere or diminish the independence of the media. They want to take away markets or private property and redistribution becomes something bigger than just redistribution. It becomes actually that original Marxist idea of transcending capitalism. So I'm not bothered by the left or the right. Uh, I think they're normal and we should have that debate. We're a gigantic, diverse country of many different political points of view. I'm troubled only by the extremes that are against the system qua system that want to get rid of it. And supposedly that will be the bright path to the future. History tells us that the far left and the far right are wrong about that. But once again, this doesn't mean that you have to be a social Democrat. You could be a libertarian. You could be a conservative. You could be a centrist. You could be conservative on some issues and liberal on other issues. All of that comes under what I would presume to be normal politics. And I see that as the important corrective mechanism, normal politics and market economies, non-monopolistic, open, free, and dynamic market economies. I don't like concentrations of power politically, and I don't like concentrations of power economically. I like competition in the political realm, I like competition in the economic realm. This is not perfect. It's constantly uh, uh, needs to be uh, protected and reinvented. And there are flaws that uh, are fundamental and need to be adjusted and addressed and everything else, especially equality of opportunity. Equality of outcome is unreachable and is a mistake 
because it produces perverse and unintended consequences, equality of outcome attempts. Attempts to make people equal on the outcome side. But attempts to make them more equal on the front end, on the opportunity side, that's really, really important for a healthy society. That's where we've fallen down. Our schools are not providing equality of opportunity for for the majority of people in all of our school systems. And so I see problems there. I see a need to invest in ourselves, invest in infrastructure, invest in human capital, create greater equality of opportunity, but also to make sure that we have good governance because governance is the variable that enables you to do all these other things.